Uh, right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's not easy being the warm-up act to uh, Elon Musk, but I know one man who is up to the task, and he's um, sitting beside me. Um, his name is Bilal Sheikh, and he is the Chief Operating Officer at WRL Technologies. He's going to explain in a minute what WRL Technologies um, does. Uh, I've been on a steep learning curve this afternoon. Um, uh, here, here we are hearing uh, from JB about uh, lithium-ion batteries and the future and what they can do. Um, people like Bilal are on a completely different course when it comes to batteries. Tell us what you do and what you think the future is. Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. Um, so we're uh, in a technology called SuperCap. SuperCap's an alternative, a non-chemical alternative to lithium-ion. Uh, SuperCap essentially uh, is a, I call it the evolvement of the battery. Um, it's non-chemical in nature and it stores energy electrostatically as opposed to electrochemically. So what does that mean? Um, we're able to charge batteries very quickly. In fact, we've uh, charged a battery in less than 30 seconds. We have an extremely long life, up to 45 years or 1 million cycles. We use the entire capacity of a battery, so we DOD at 100%. Uh, we also use 99.1% .1 of the energy that goes into our batteries is the energy that's used. In chemical batteries, you often waste up to 30% in inefficiencies. So if you recall going back to your days of chemistry during uh, the you know, chemical reactions, you often have losses. And losses in energy are translated in when lithium ion or other forms of chemical uh, battery uh, charge and discharge energy. So that's a very high level understanding of what SuperCap does. Um, we uh, have been manufacturing SuperCap for about four years now, successfully, and we've deployed uh, 20,000 of our modules globally, and they're working very successfully to date. Okay, we'll come on to the deployment and how realistic um, SuperCaps are. I should have said at the start, of course, you can put your questions to Bilal um, if you're watching digitally using the, the chat box, and we'll come to questions in the room uh, briefly. Um, it sounds almost too good to be yeah. true, um, super caps, sometimes called to ultra capacitors as well. Um, you, you call them super caps. Uh, you don't, you, there's, it's more sustainable. Uh, you can uh, contain more power within them. They will last longer. They charge faster. What's the catch? Well, Joe, we've been hearing this for many years now. It's too good to be true. How can this be? Well, it's actual, it's reality. Uh, we're the only company in the world who have got an IP. Um, our technology is centric to an inventor based in the UAE by the name of Wasim Ashraf Qureshi. Uh, he developed this technology about nine years ago. Um, and essentially, I often tell people it's like the evolvement of the horse and cart to the car. Um, there isn't really a comparison. We've really opened up a whole new dynamic when it comes to energy storage. Um, Supercaps inherently can charge very quickly, inherently are biodegradable, they're made of graphene, inherently they're able to uh, last very long, they're very rugged. Um, what we have done, or what Wasim has done in his invention, in his pattern, is created a power electronic uh, using algorithms that enables the uh, power electronic to control supercaps, to control their discharge, to control their re retention in energy, to balance them, etc. So that's actually the key secret source. Because this has been one of the problems, that it charges very quickly, but discharges very quickly as well, and that's what you're trying to control. Uh, you're not the only ones interested in this. Um, we're having Elon Musk on in a few minutes. Tesla has invested in a super cap company. So have a few other manufacturers around the world. Um, but we're not seeing them anytime soon. Uh, and one of the reasons that's cited is, is cost. What does the cost picture look like? Can you get this technology down to the cost of a lithium ion battery? For well, uh, I hope everyone's holding on to their chairs. We are the cheapest form of energy storage in the market today. Why? Uh, because of our ability to store energy and deliver accurate energy, I call it. So the nameplate capacity, um, we're a, we, we bring our cost down. The manufacturing process is involved in manufacturing super cap based energy storage is a lot cheaper, a lot more um, effective, a lot more efficient, sorry, than lithium ion. So couple all of these factors together, we call ourselves the cheapest form of energy storage in the world. Lithium ion and other forms of chemical energy storage are often oversized to accommodate for cooling, to accommodate for life cycle, degradation, etc. cetera. Uh, I'll just check if there are any questions in the room at this point. Um, if there are, please raise your hand. Um, if not, I'll check in in a moment. Uh, I can't see very well, but I don't think they are. So, um, Bilal, um, one of the uh, issues is how this can work in an EV. Um, you've talked about 
static use of, uh, of supercaps. Are you um, going to be in EV soon? Have you inked any deals with any um, major car makers? Well, uh, I can't talk about all of those deals. We have. Um, we are working with a very well-known American manufacturer at the moment by the name of Shelby. Uh, we're at initial stages at the moment for development of, um, uh, or, or of a battery system, a storage system for them. Um, we have always known that the EV sector would be the big one for us. Mm. Uh, we, however, focused on the stationary market purposely. Uh, every technology has a, 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 a path, and our path of involvement involved increasing our energy density. We have now recently uh, launched, uh, the inventor has developed a solid state based energy storage device using graphene. Uh, so it's the world's first supercap based um, uh, uh, solid state battery and energy density will eventually go to 450 watt hours per kilogram. This is unheard of in the energy storage world. And what are your future plans then? When will we see one of these uh, roll out and what will um, WRL be doing next? So um, our path is we've actually got a prototype that's ready now. Uh, we're now moving to commercialization stage. We're hoping commercialization will take place at the end of this year. And at the beginning of next year, we should have a, a successful deployment into a well-known EV manufacturer. Some questions coming in sure. here for you. Uh, one is, how much energy can you store? Can I have a 70 uh, kilowatt hour super cap in my car? <laughs> Absolutely, you can. So our new solid state... Yeah, when though. Oh, when. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, we're hoping by the end of the year, uh, that's a realistic timeline for us. Uh, we already have prototypes ready. We're now moving to manufacturing stage. By the way, Joe, uh, we have a gigawatt factory in the United Arab Emirates where we're based and where I've flown in from. Um, and that factory will basically double up now to produce solid state based energy storage as well, enabling us to capitalize on the existing infrastructure. Uh, 70 kilowatts, absolutely. The solid state product that we're rolling out uh, is a product that will be able to be incorporated into the body of a car. It can be bent, you can drill a hole into it, you can cut it to capacity. Um, and essentially you could use it in the panel of a car. Now, lithium ion alternatives are not collision proof and therefore are hazardous. I'm probably upsetting a lot of people here, by the way, but um, Supercap is extremely tough, rugged, collision proof, fireproof, um, and I believe it's the future in terms of EV storage. Let me ask you about funding. Um, have you got enough funding to get you to the, uh, the EV world, into the EV world? Are you uh, offering, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, we've, had a, we've had an interesting path to funding. Um, as of today, we've raised approximately uh, in the region of about $60 million. Um, we're now moving towards IPO by the end of the year, so watch this space. Um, we're now heading into pre-IPO stage. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's been an interesting route. Uh, we've purposely been very careful and select in who we've used. We've recently partnered up with an investment firm in the United States who have been funding us, and um, we're, we're actually quite fortunate. It's been a hard slog for the inner circle, but uh, we're there now. Is this investment firm looking to take you public? Is, is that a SPAC? Absolutely, yes, 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 yes. And uh, where will you be going public? In well, uh, they're, they're obviously gearing us towards a, a, a listing on NASDAQ. Um, so it looks like we're going in that direction. However, there is talk of a dual listing as well. So as you know, the financial world has various ways and means of raising money for uh, companies like ourselves. So. Okay. And that's the, so the plan is to, to, SPAC, uh, to list via SPAC uh, by the end of the year. Uh, what about physical expansion? You're based now in the UAE. Um, are you planning to be anywhere else, um, so, to build anywhere else? Yeah, really good question. Uh, we're actually looking to capitalize on this supply chain shortage in the world today with our competitors with alternative chemical storage. Um, so at the moment, we're provisioning an initial rollout of three factories other than our factory in Dubai. Uh, this would be in Turkey, in the United States, and uh, in West Africa. Um, and the future plan is to roll out eight other factories. A unique thing in supercap based energy storage is that it's not specific to a part of the world. We're not dependent, for instance, on where lithium ion is mined and per se have to have our factories in that specific region to uh, benefit from economies of scale. Uh, the product that's been manufactured has been made in a way, or the product that's been developed has been made in a way that it could be literally manufactured in any part of the world and we could still achieve very good uh, reasonable cost benefits. 
I'm just going to check again if there are any questions in the room at this point. Uh, can't see any hands. Oh, I've got a question over there. Could we get a mic to that gentleman right in the middle over there? Uh, I think that mic is making its way to you, sir. Marvellous. Uh, th thank you very much. So my name is Chris Fox. I'm at uh, River Simple. We make sustainable cars, but we use um, like a hybrid um, powertrain using hydrogen and supercaps. So yes, it does work very, very well. Do you see your future replacing uh, the entirety of batteries? Do you see, or do you see um, your products being part of a, a hybrid system going forward? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, we would like to see our product replacing chemical batteries for the very reason that we fundamentally believe that um, chemical batteries are not the answer to reducing carbon footprint in its entirety. It's the lesser of the evil, yes, but it's uh, not the answer because, um, you know, there are statistics around about how much environmental degradation comes as a result of landfilling chemical batteries in the process of manufacturing. However, we also understand the, the, the uh, mammoth task of getting energy storage out to the world in particular with this new era of electrification in vehicles uh, that we're facing. So uh, we believe it will be a mixture. Uh, we would like to take as much of the market share as possible. Um, we're doing a good job, I believe, so far. Um, however, we would like to see more supercap-based energy storage rolled out throughout the world. And when you, uh, following up from that, when you talk about your partnerships with various manufacturers, are those for hybrid applications or are they looking at pure supercap powered cars? At the moment, our focus is on pure supercap based uh, solutions. However, we are open to discussion on hybrid solutions as well. Uh, but uh, the proposition of a pure supercap solution, we're the only company in the world who has the ability to provide a pure supercap solution. And therefore, um, it's, it's you know, our, our forte, essentially. There's been a lot of talk about um, supercaps in relation to high performance cars. Uh, I know Lamborghini, for example, is interested in this and uh, perhaps even Formula One because it gives you that extra you know, yeah. boost and uh, it's good at discharging very large amounts of power very quickly. Yeah. Um, is that where we're going to see it first in high performance before we see it in a regular EV? Yeah, so this is the exciting part of what we do, uh, I believe. And um, for those who are, um, you know, big fans of high performance cars. Supercap is the ultimate answer. Uh, manufacturers have approached us for the very reason that chemical batteries are not able to deliver that high torque load requirement uh, for super, you know, super fast or sorry, uh, uh, supercar performance. Right. Yeah. Um, talk quickly about raw materials. We've had some warnings today uh, from Carlos Tavares and others that there you know, will be a shortage of batteries in a few years time. Uh, primarily because of raw material bottlenecks. Um, how does the supply chain dynamics that we're currently seeing affect uh, supercaps? Well, we, we like to keep our, our eyes firmly on, on you know, the markets and, and see where materials are and how supply chain is affecting material. The base, baseline uh, material with us is graphene. Uh, there are small components of uh, other metals. Um, as far as we are aware, there is, I wouldn't say an abundance, but there is enough graphene supply to fulfill our current targets and our requirements. Moving forward, there are improvements in the supply chain of graphene uh, and its production process. And just very quickly, Blau, because we have to wrap up, um, governments pouring money into lithium ion factories, basically, are you worried that all of the funding will go into lithium ion? No, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, um, when we do sit down with government representatives, it's a very easy proposition. It's a very understandable, palatable proposition. Um, and therefore, we are now capitalizing on various incentives by governments around the world. Right. And we hope to do so more. Marvellous. Bilal, thank you very much for joining us. And now on to the man of the hour, not Peter Campbell, uh, Elon <laughs> Musk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.